Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey traders, checking in. So it happened again. YouTube changed something where I now have to make videos public twice or they stay unlisted. So a little change in the routine. No biggie. Checking in on the market today, we had euphoria yesterday after hours with all of those bullish reaction to earnings. In extended hours, we saw a climax top and we've now pulled back looking at daily consolidation starting to be underway. We broke the low of yesterday today. After hours right now, we've got earnings reactions from Amazon bearish and Apple has yet to report. So we're down a little bit from where we closed in the S&P 500 and QQQ is down a little bit because Amazon's down $110. So one other thing I wanna point out, Bitcoin is tracking what the S&P 500 is doing for those of you that care. If we look at the futures chart, SPX 500 USD, I like the time frame on the four hour chart for the most clarity right now. But a big surge last night, solid pullback today. The volume is standing out for the bears. And just real quick to compare that to what Bitcoin did, it had a huge surge. It pulled back the same four four hour candles that we've seen on SPY. What I'm watching for both is the same thing because they're correlated. But for the S&P 500, so we're watching the four hour uptrend and we highlighted a couple days ago, this key support level when we closed week, I think we closed week, what was it? Tuesday night, Wednesday night, either way. We closed week, but we stayed in the four hour uptrend because we held this little support level here. So that's a baseline of support to be watching. And I'm watching for the potential of a head and shoulders pattern now. The size of this pullback is such that it's significant enough that we would anticipate a lower high is potentially the most likely scenario. So this would be a left shoulder, this would be the head, and if we bounce overnight tonight, this is where bears, and I went over this, it's a perfect segue for yesterday's market video, so if you didn't watch it, check it out, because I talked about not trying to grab the bulls by the horns, waiting for weakness, and I went over a trade review on the five minute time frame that's the exact same thing I'm about to talk about on the four hour time frame for the S&P 500. It's waiting for an initial sign of weakness and saying, okay, bears just proved something to me, that's a significant pullback. We're still in a daily uptrend. We're still in longer term timeframes in control of the bulls, but this is enough of a pullback to be scouting for a lower high. And why I like to enter bearish after an initial sign of weakness on the bounce is because if I'm trying to short into strength, where does my stop loss go? I don't have a clearly defined level. If I try and short this bounce, my stop's very clear. I put my stop over the top. So I can scale in. I never think I'm going to nail the top of a bounce. So multiple orders. If we open higher tomorrow in the S&P 500, you better believe I'm going to be watching for a four hour lower high compared to 29.72. And if we look at SPY's levels, it's going to be looking for a lower high compared to 22.96.77. So it all depends on how we trade overnight tonight, but I am watching for that potential right shoulder to form and watching for the potential of a short entry. And it's the kind of setup where if I have a long-term holding, which I do, of uh, buying the S&P 500 a couple positions on the way down, to hedge those positions, I can look to make a bearish entry on a right shoulder, put my stop. If I'm wrong, I get stopped out and I leave a little bit of money on the table, but my long-term holdings continue to gain money. And if I'm right, I make money on the way down and don't see my account value drop because of my long-term holdings. So it's something I'm watching for tomorrow and into Monday for the potential of a lower high compared to that temporary top. All things considered, even if we do see that four hour head and shoulders play out and we do drop down, we're just gonna look for a daily consolidation and it could be just further daily consolidation. Anything above 27, make that 272, those levels in the futures chair threw me off. 272, anything above that, will be a daily high or low. And we can do the same thing on this time frame. Let's say you wanna be cautious and patient as a bear and we pull back hard, but we hold 272, you can look for the lower high on the bounce and use the top as your stop level. So that's what I'm watching. As of right now, could this be a daily bull flag? Yes, absolutely. SPY could be a daily bull flag, but why I don't think it is, at least for the time being, is the bear volume 
the size of the pullback. And if it were going to be a bull flag that we're going to confirm in the next day or two, it would require a very significant V-shaped recovery from this pullback. And considering that most of our major earnings are now past us, this was prime time week for earnings. And considering we saw the laggard sectors all run, and today was a, a day of profit taking in those laggard sectors, I'm watching for the lower high. And I'll do a laggard video after this. IWM, solid pullback, close at the low. Tons of space for a daily high or low, but a temporary top is in for now. So we're looking for a daily high or low compared to 116.48. The bulls need to change the hourly trend back in their favor for a daily high or low to be set. And we'll be watching if we see weakness tomorrow. The first hourly oversold conditions after a bull run like that on the daily time frame generally sees a solid bounce. So there's two things I look for after a big bull move on the daily time frame for stocks. What do I look for for a higher low? An hourly trend change, which is a conservative approach because you're not going to get the bottom. You're going to see the higher low and higher high, and it's going to be a bit off of the bottom for that hourly trend to confirm. Or if I want to be an aggressive bull looking for the daily higher low, as soon as we start hitting hourly oversold conditions, I start scaling into that weakness looking for the daily higher low and the first hourly oversold bounce. QQQ, so the high was 219.97, and we broke that today. Pretty much a double top, though. Most important short-term support for me is 211.21. After hours, we're down over a dollar. So 211.21, if that level is lost, I would say our daily uptrend is lost. And then we would zoom out and look for weekly consolidation to be the most likely scenario from there. So that 211 level is very important for me for QQQ on the daily chart. Financial sector. So we've seen the financial sector bulls in control the past few days, and that changed today. And we saw the tech sector holding on well. The tech sector closed break even pretty much. The financial sector was down 2.5%. So all to start this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Actually, Wednesday, both names are very strong. But Monday, Tuesday, financial sector bulls, tech sector bears. But we're just seeing this back and forth action. Money is just moving around into different sectors faster than I can remember seeing in a long time. And right now we're seeing the financial sector consolidate after a double top. This double top is very important to me. If we lose the daily uptrend after that double top, it's certainly going to be very likely that our weekly top has been set on this bounce. So we're still looking for a daily higher low because of the amount of space we have to work with. I would consider anything above 2133 as a daily higher low, maintaining the uptrend. Best case for bulls, set that higher low and break the double top. Worst case, just drop right back down after that double top. And something that I would feel would be more likely than that worst case would be a daily higher low, lower high, just like I talked about, and then the loss of the daily uptrend. So if we see another red day, it'll be notable because where we stand right now on this pullback, if that's all we get on this pullback, we can definitely see continuation. That's not a significant pullback. If, however, we have another red day, that continuation gets a lot harder. So the size of the pullback is definitely very meaningful for me, but the most important thing on XLF is the double top. Apple earnings reaction right now live while we're talking. We're up a few percent here. We're testing 300. We're over 300. So it looks bullish. Let's see if that's going to offset Amazon. QQQ back up, heading towards where we closed. Apple's not holding those gains. We'll check back in. XLV. So XLV daily consolidation, anything above 96.62 is a higher low. So still in a daily uptrend, but again, I'm very observant of the size of the consolidation to find a higher low to determine what's more likely, continuation or an inability to break resistance and a loss of the daily uptrend. Biotech, still pulling back, closing at the low of the day. Look at the closes at the high of the day on the way up, showing momentum. There was a stretch here where we closed near the high of the day, five out of seven days, and here we are closing at the low three days in a row, essentially. So still easily in an uptrend. This 12 period exponential moving average, this red line is a bit of a visual guide for me. If we hold that level, continuation is certainly possible. If we lose that level, then we start looking for the lower high to be the most likely result when we bounce. So that's a nice visual guide when you're determining, is this pullback significant enough to be looking for a lower high or minimal enough to be looking for continuation. SMH, back and forth. How about this choppy action? Huge bear day from the open on Monday, Tuesday. 
Big bull day from the open yesterday, big bear day from the open today. Short-term support, 132.50. And if that level breaks, we're looking down at 128.32. Weekly time frame, bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly time frame. We've got to be watching these. Bearish reversal candlestick is not enough for me to be bearish because you can have a weekly bearish reversal candlestick and still be in a daily uptrend, or you can have a same looking candlestick on the weekly time frame and be in a daily or having lost the daily uptrend. So you always have to zoom in and look for those details. And in this instance, we are still in a daily uptrend. So if the week ended right now, someone who looked at the weekly chart would say, oh, that's a bearish reversal candlestick. I'm bearish. And if you don't zoom in and realize we're still in a daily uptrend, you could miss a little bit of detail. The VIX trying to bounce here. We're building the base. So 30, 50, 30, 70, 30, 90. Anything under 47, 80 is just a lower high. If we get a bit more bounce follow through, still gonna expect a lower high to form, but then we'll start looking for an inverse head and shoulders if we get more bounce follow through, where we will look for, if the bulls can make their way up over 40, if we can get a bounce up over 40, we'll start looking at the possibility of an inverse head and shoulders to bottom out. But I would need more bounce in pretty much the exact opposite of what I've been talking about. The size of the bounce dictates whether bearish continuation is more likely or whether a higher low and the inverse head and shoulders then becomes more likely. The dollar, 98.82 support is being tested. It's a double bottom. We broke it by one penny today. Important for these dollar bulls to show up tomorrow if they want to maintain in this equilibrium. And right now on the hourly time frame, weak bounce need to change this hourly trend, create some space, and if we get a bear break on the dollar, it will be notable for the metals. That being said, we'll get to metals in a second. TLT, also seeing some weakness. We've lost the daily uptrend in TLT. We look at the weekly chart. The most important level is 163.48. That is our higher low. And if we lose 163.48, our weekly uptrend is lost. And at that point, things will become a lot less clear as far as trends go on a lot of time frames. So that is the level that I'm watching short term. Gold. So gold dumped today. And you could look at this as a little bounce and a daily lower high and lower low. And you could also say we're still in a tightening daily range. You could argue it either way. For some people, that's going to be enough of a bounce to be a lower high and lower low. For others, it's not. I'm still keeping my stop on my long-term GLD position under 1661 because due to the position sizing, it's not significant enough for me that I care about this much difference on gold. So I'm using the lower level. If it breaks, I will exit my position. I'm also wanting to hold on and watch to see what the dollar does there. Because if the dollar breaks that equilibrium bearish, even though that correlation has gone out the window to a certain degree, and in fact, we have a pretty positive correlation. Five red days, four green days. And for gold, pretty much five red days, a couple green days. We've been directly correlated with the dollar the last six days or so, which is interesting. But all I care about is 1661. And if it breaks, I will say, yes, we're in a clear daily downtrend. Clear weekly consolidation is underway and I am no longer in a gold position. I will patiently wait to see if I like a setup for a re-entry. Silver, all over the place. And we reacted to jobs numbers this morning, which is what is creating some of this volatility. So let's just look at gold real quick. This morning, we reacted to jobs numbers. We dumped and then bounced and then rolled over midday because we had a lot of support in the 1690s that broke and some stops triggered. So silver, losing clarity. We know 1454 is key support and we did hold that level. So that's our most important short-term support, but it is looking like weekly consolidation to continue here as we have topped out on silver. Weekly exponential resistance continuing to reject the price. Miners, no longer a daily bull flag as far as I'm concerned. Clear bear break of support the last four days, closed near the low of the day, and we're still in an uptrend. But again, it's what is most favored. If this is all the consolidation you're going to see, continuation is most likely. If you start to pull back more significantly, lower high comes on the table for the next time we bounce. I would consider anything above 29.55 as a higher low on the daily chart. So we are still in a daily uptrend as far as I'm concerned, but... Another potential head and shoulders we have to be watching for if we start to see another red day or two. 
Oil futures, June contract, broke resistance of 1826. So we are in a daily uptrend now. That's a higher low and higher high, which means zoom out to the weekly chart. And we know to be looking for a weekly lower high compared to 3315. That's a long ways away. So we're not losing sight of the weekly downtrend, but we know anything above 1007 keeps the daily uptrend intact. And definitely a bullish development on oil in the short term after being so bearish the past few weeks. USO, first time we have closed higher than we have opened in a long time. And certainly still a ton of volatility here, but we're in an hourly uptrend. We had a higher low at the end of the day yesterday at 17.55, higher low today at 17.86. Just want to remain ever cautious trading any oil instruments. Apple's break even now. We went all the way up over 300. We're back down into the 294s. We closed in the upper 293s. QQQ back down. Natural gas, daily equilibrium tightening up. I'm looking at the low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low. Most important support, 1711. Most important resistance, 1883. We have four higher lows on the daily to be watching. We'll see if the bulls can keep those intact. And in order to do so, we're going to have to break these lower highs and try and keep this bull move going. So quick check in on Apple. We'll see the after hours action here. Big bull move and giving it back. We're now in the red. So not a significant reaction at the moment as far as where we stood from where we closed. But the bear's coming out a bit. So all bulls yesterday after hours and all bears, at least Amazon and Apple bears today after hours. Although Amazon's pretty much break even, option sellers are going to win, it appears, on these earnings reactions. So that's where we stand. I'll see you all next week. Check out the laggards video if you're interested in some more volatile names like the cruise lines and airliners, really liking one of these airliners ETF setups we've got going on. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Do good things and we'll see you soon. Checking in on the garlic and onions. Garlic's good to go, but some of these onions, unfortunately, are bolting. Which means going to seed, which means they aren't going to make a big bulb because they're focusing all their energy on making flowers and seeds. So that can happen. This instance is most likely due to fluctuating temperatures. We had a spring where we were going up to the 70, upper 70s and then back down to the 30s. So you can see this variety in the middle, and these are the seed heads, or the flower heads that are about to come. The red variety is not going to seed as much, but starting to see a few of them. So just might not have good onions. That being said, you can still take them now and use them as green onions, which we've been doing. The back row not seeding yet, so maybe we'll get a row out of it. Nope, they are. Bummer. Lots of green onion. When garlic does it, it's called scapes. And you can just cut it and eat it, and then they will stop and put their focus back into their bulbs. But onions won't go back. Radish. Peas still climbing. Brussels sprouts getting big, cabbage. Catching up, it started a little slow. You can see all these tendrils. Every day I'm still guiding them up the fence. All the lettuce doing well, starting to pick from it daily. Eventually, I forgot I have some bush beans. I was gonna climb beans up this fence but I need a spot for bush beans as well. So with this much lettuce, definitely some of it's going to get the boot. It also doesn't perform as well in the summer. It likes the cool weather a lot better.